Mega Praise Ministries. We're out to reach the lost, to bring the lost sheep back home, to build a relationship between God and man, for the worship, the presence, the healing, the restoring. That's what it's about, the restoring of the homes, the restoring of the families, the healing of the bodies, to enjoy a relationship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We love the worship. We love the outpouring of the presence of God. This is what this ministry is all about, Mega Praise Ministries, to see what that was that was lost. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Welcome, and this is Pastor Manuel Johnson. Our program is called Only the Truth, and we're coming into you to all your uh, smart devices and all around the world. I'm just blessed, and you know what I say every time I'm coming into your life for this moment in time? The good news is that you do not have to be part of the bad news. And I got a very special guest, actually my top guest, who means so much to me. Yes, 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 yes. Yours truly, my beautiful wife, Shiva Johnson. Hallelujah. Shiva, tell the people, wave at them right now. Hallelujah. She is going to be, uh, we're going to be talking to her about the book. But first of all, I just want you to know some things. Uh, you know, the Bible is just full of many revelations. Many, 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 many revelations. And one of the things that I like about the Bible is that it shows us the end. It shows us how it ends. Because, you know, a book has a beginning, you know. But the Bible is different. It's not like the end, like most books. It's continued. When you, the Bible talks about the end, it wasn't the end, it's that's it. The end of the age. The Bible tells us what will take place in the age that we're living in. In the age of the fallen man. How through Christ, we, those that are in Christ, we triumph into that new age, the millennium age. That's right, the millennium age. The Bible talks about a thousand year reign with Christ. But it doesn't, it's not even over then. We live and reign with him forever and ever. But right now, we're in the fallen age, the age where we're living, we're fallen, we have fallen because of sin. But thank God for Jesus Christ. Thank God for the Lord who came and saved and redeemed us back to God again through his blood sacrifice on Calvary. Thank God for that. So I have eternal life now. I don't have to, I know this body and your body will go back to dust. Why? The Bible says to, it's appointed for every man to die and then the judgment. That sounds kind of cruel. You're going to be going to die and then it's a judgment? But for me, God is not my judge anymore. He is my Savior. I'm not going to be judged. I, why? Because I've been redeemed through the blood of the Lamb. And that promise is for you and your grandchildren and your children's children, for those that will receive the Lord. Why am I talking about this so much? Because have you heard of the term rapture fever? You know, people, some people use rapture as a good escape. Does the Bible talk about rapture? Is the word rapture in the Bible? It's not in the, it's not in the English version. It's not in the King James version, you know. It is in the Spanish version because it means rapture. Caught up means rapture in the Latin version. And we see types and shadows of it in the Bible. So we see types and shadows with Elijah as he was going to heaven. That was a form of rapture. You know, he was taken up. He was taken up. So we see types and shadows of what would take place in the future. But my question is, and your question, is it our generation? Is it really our generation? Did we miss it? Or are we too early? Well, saints, I want to tell you something. Do I believe it's in our generation? I'm going to tell you. I'm not so sure about that. Why? 
because a lot of times we misinterpret the Bible. It's, no, no, people have had dreams and visions. Well, the Bible tells us we're going to have dreams and visions. But the Bible doesn't, doesn't necessarily tell you what those dreams and visions were going to be about. Many times we try to customize a prophecy, customize a dream, and customize a vision. Why? Because we lean to our own understanding. And many times our own understanding leans towards the flesh. We try to entertain the flesh. I cannot entertain the flesh when I get a kingdom, a dream from the Lord. I can't connect that with them because it's wrong. God is a holy God. He's a righteous God. When I get a dream and a vision, I must go before God. I must seek his face so I can get the proper interpretation. That's what I love about Daniel, Pastor Shiva. Daniel would go and he would get a vision and he wouldn't run with it. He would always seek the Lord whenever he would get a dream or vision. Daniel would seek the Lord. And sometimes it took him, as far as we know, as far as we know, up to 21 days just to get the interpretation of the dream. But in, in our generation, and our dear Moshe, who's Jewish, he's sitting in the audience. And Moshe, in our dear generation, we take a dream and we run with it without seeking the Lord. And this is something we ought not to do. Because it's spiritual, so we need to seek the spiritual realm for answers. Glory to God. Instead of sitting there, we get something spiritual and we look towards the natural realms for answers. And we miss interpretations. We customize a dream and a vision or even a prophecy. And we run with it. And when it doesn't happen the way we thought it was going to happen, we want to fault the prophet. Or we want to fault God for thinking it was wrong. And first of all, you must test the spirit. The Bible says to test all spirits to make sure it was from God. Second of all, if when you find out that it is from God, you must seek the God that gave it to you, Jesus Christ. You seek him. Lord, I don't want to understand this. I want to know. You know, in the Bible, we see that there were many men of God that was, that was, that was, that was, uh, that was, spoke, that was taken forth into the future. It doesn't mean that it was their future. For example, Apostle John. Apostle John was taken into the future a few thousand years before his time. That's how we got the book of Revelation. He was taken into, he was catapulted into the future. We can be that. Some of us, we can be transferred from here. I could be talking to you and my spirit could actually go to another part of the world. Could be going to China. To be, I could be ministering in China. And I'm talking to you right now. It happened to Philip in the book of Acts. You know, so a lot of things can take place. But Apostle John, Apostle Sheba, was, he was, he, he, was, he was transferred into the future a few thousand years into the future, and he could not explain what he saw. A lot of, the way he explained it was doing his time, in, a, in the time of the Roman Empire. So he explained things in that area. But he didn't know what a car was or what a rocket ship was our plane so he can only explain it according to his generation and so God will give us things of the future and the only way we can explain it is from our own generation so we have to be very very careful so many of us are getting dreams and vision as the Bible tells us in the book of Joel that we will get them and we keep thinking everything we get is gonna be our generation Saints that's not true it didn't, happen to, it didn't happen to Daniel. It didn't happen to Joseph. It didn't happen to, to John. And it didn't happen in the times of Paul. They were getting future dreams, dreams that, was, they, that, that, that they were getting. And, they, and, and at the beginning, they thought it was maybe their generation. But what happened with Daniel is God had to correct, the angel had to correct Daniel. He said, this is not going to happen in your time. You will, you will go to sleep with your fathers. Did he not say that? But it's not going to happen in your time. Saints, but Daniel, if Daniel had done nothing, just received the dream or vision, if he had done nothing, he would have misinterpreted the vision and dream he had. But he did something about it. He was seeking the Lord. So I was seeking the Lord about these things. And I realized that I ha I've had dreams of the rapture. But I have come to realize, to prayer, to seeking God, 
that this is probably another generation is going to happen after me. Now, you will decide your own conclusion on that. And I know many people don't want to hear that because they want, because they're your rapture ready. But the rapture is not meant for you and I to escape from our problems, from our debt, from our issues. That's not what the rapture was for. We are overcomers in Christ. You know, we don't manage our sin. We're Christians. We overcome them by the blood of the Lamb. We don't manage our problems. We overcome them by the blood of the Lamb. We will have our worldly tribulations and problems, but we overcome them in Christ. That's who Christ is. He's an overcomer. And Pastor Sheba, I want to talk to you. My wife wrote a beautiful book, but not just a beautiful book, an anointed book called God's Air Force. And she's got, uh, you know, a handful of chapters, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to go into, you know, she's got seven powerful chapters here, dwelling on high, breaking free from Satan's uh, tra uh, training, training, yes, the fall of Babylon of the world system. That's what, you know, the heavenly basis for, for the fall of Babylon, the angel uh, of dethrone of the three th uh, dethrone devils, the root of guilt. I like that one. The manifest sons of God. But let's talk about chapter four. Chapter four, the heavenly basis for the fall of Babylon. You know, Pastor Shiva, my dear wife, give a, give us an insight. Well, Pastor Manuel, as you said, there's a lot of misconceptions about the rapture. Yes. And. This chapter and uh, along with a couple of other chapters are meant to clarify the concept of the rapture. That the rapture is not an escape flight to heaven. Mm -hmm. It's actually a first class to flight to heaven mm -hmm. for overcoming Christians. It's not an escape flight to heaven for beat up and broke <laughs> uh, Christians, but it's a first flight uh, to heaven for overcoming come on, and come powerful on. Christians, victorious Christians. And that's the true concept of rapture. Why do I say that? Look in the Bible. Who was raptured in the Bible? We have a type and a shadow of the people who will be part of the rapture. Enoch was one who was raptured. Elijah was another one who was raptured. So we're getting this type and a shadow of the kind of Christians, the kind of believers who will be raptured. So the rapture is for Enoch's and Elijah's, not for beat up, broke Christians who can't handle this life and they're looking for, for an escape. Mm. And unless you're an overcoming Christian, even if the rapture w took place tomorrow, you won't be part of it. Because you have to, the Bible says you have to go through trials to overcome. Okay, we have to show ourselves worthy and we have to overcome, just like Jesus overcame. So uh, this chapter explains how the rapture actually cannot take place until there are certain things that the body of Christ need to get done. Have we met the, those criteria yet? Well, that's the thing. A lot of preachers preach that, you know, everything that for the rapture to take place has already been done. That's not true at all because you know most of these preachers were from their own generation and for each generation God gives certain revelations that pertain to that generation so and most of these preachers are actually they're done with their ministry and they're ready to go <laughs> but we the the new generation of ministers who are rising up and God has given them visions of you know years of ministry and so much vision that there's no way they can get it done if the rapture was going to be tomorrow. That's right. And to us, to this generation, God will give us the revelations uh, that we need for our generation. So the past generation would not get insight about our generation because they didn't need to know that. But for us, God will give us new revelations that pertain to our generation. And the thing that God is showing this generation is that the, the things that the church needs to get done, such as, you know, have you heard of the manifest sons of God, the rise of the manifest sons of God? That hasn't happened yet. Mm. 
The, uh, and that's explained in chapter 7 of this book, that the manifest sons of God will be those that they, will, they won't act like Jesus. They will actually be a Jesus. Mm. So they won't just have peace. They will be peace. Mm. It's just a, totally a new, a, a higher level of being like Christ. For the most part, the church has been imitating Jesus. But it is time to be a Jesus. Come on. And that has not happened yet. Yes, it has happened to some individuals here and there. You know, there are people who are already uh, having amazing experiences. You know, they are going, traveling to heaven back and forth. They are um, traveling back and forth in time. They are being translated in the spirit to another country. Yes, there are people who are doing that. But by and large, it hasn't happened to the church. God is waiting for a mature church. And the Bible, say, uh, the Bible says, Jesus will come back for a bride. Okay, you tell me, can an immature girl get married or a mature girl? Unless a girl reaches the age of maturity, she's not ready for marriage. Mm. So why would Jesus come back for an immature church? Mm. She's not ready for marriage yet. And mm. the church, I'm sure you would agree with me that, by and large, has been immature. As a whole, the church has not reached the maturity of Christ yet to come to the full stature of Jesus Christ. Mm. That hasn't happened yet. So he's, he's coming for a, a bride without spot or wrinkle. Exactly. See, this is the revelation of spot and wrinkle. Spot is sin and wrinkle is flesh. There is a lot of Christians um, who, you know, we live a sin-free life. We, we don't live in sin. But we still have flesh in us. Jesus is coming back for a church who has died completely to the flesh. Mm. That hasn't happened yet. Again, to, it's happened to some individuals, but not to the church as a whole yet. This is good. Keep going. So in my book, uh, the, the chapter 4, The Heavenly Basis for the Fall of Babylon, I explain one of the major events that needs to take place before the rapture could take place. And that's the fact that all these thrones, of the demonic thrones in the second heaven, they need to be overthrown before the rapture can happen. You see, those thrones were meant for Adam and Eve and their descendants. What did Jesus, what did God say? I said, rule over the earth. To rule over something, you need to be, your, set your throne above that thing, okay? So these thrones for Adam and Eve and their descendants were in the second heaven. They were up there and they were, they were meant for them. But when Adam and Eve fell into sin, demonic spirits took over those thrones and started ruling over the earth. And we call that, you know, the spiritual Babylon, the system of Babylon, which is explained in detail in the book. And those thrones of Satan and his hosts need to be overthrown by overcoming Christians before the rapture can take place. Wow. And you that's know, how the millennial kingdom will be ushered in. Well, you, you know, I know you're receiving that, and that's very powerful. Now, I know you want to read, I don't want her to give everything away. So you know how to get this book. You go to megapraiseministries.com. Megapraiseministries.com. And with a Mr. Engineer, will you just show that bo our book there? Megapraiseministries.com. Mega, I wanted to get this into you. I'm not here to advertise the book, but I, I, it's going to be a blessing to you. It is full of kingdom revelations. The Lord downloaded this book and, and, and uh, all the chapters and the information to my wife. And I was a spiritual encouragement behind that. But the Lord used her in a mighty way. And, and every, we've sold... Um, I, I want to, what I want to say is those that we have put this book into, they have received it. Not one person that has read this book has not come back disappointed. They've always come back with a major testimony. And I just want to talk to you some things. And as, as, as my wife was ministering on the rapture, we understand what uh, 1 Thessalonians 4.15 talks about coming together. But what I want to do is I just want to give you a few nuggets because I know many of you are watching, you're thinking, well, you know, um, the Bible says that, and the Bible says it, that when you see the fig tree blossom, 
and it talks about that generation will not pass. And so we look at Israel in 1948 uh, becoming, a, 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 uh, becoming a nation, but that is incorrect because Israel was already a nation. They became a nation in Egypt in the book of Exodus. That's where the, the, the Bible makes it very clear that God tells Jacob, and he says, Is, you know, that I will take you and your family, and in Egypt, you will become, your seed will become a mighty nation. They became a nation in Exodus. They didn't come, become a nation in 1948. They became established as a state in 1948. Exactly. So the Bible keeps saying, when the fig tree blossoms, well, the fig tree is Israel. That's true. But when Israel, understand the blossom, blossoming of Israel is not what people have said. So a lot of scholars have said Israel blossomed in 1948. No, they became recognized as a state in 1948. When we see Israel blossom, I'll tell you when we see Israel blossom, Israel actually blossoms when they recognize their Messiah. That's when they blossom. Because right now, we see that Israel blossoms in Revelation. When their eyes are open and they realize that the Antichrist is spoken in Revelation is not who he says he is, and they were deceived, and their eyes are open, and God raises up 144,000 Jews, male Jews, and they are being used to witness with other sources that God uses. We see Israel, when Israel opens their eyes and their hearts and they realize who Jesus Christ is as a Messiah, that's when you see the blossoms of Israel. The Lord says that generation will not pass. That generation doesn't pass. He said that generation, they will what? Experience what? The coming of the Lord. And that happens. When Israel recognizes, when the Israel, when God opens the eyes of Israel and they recognize that, oh my God, this is an imposter, this is an antichrist, and Jesus Christ is the, the this is blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, their eyes are open. All of a sudden, so many Jews become born again. Become born again. They be, they blossom for the very first time. They blossom. He said, no, 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 no. They said, the Bible said Israel will blossom. They said that land was barren. God wasn't talking about the land. God was talking about Israel as a nation will blossom. The land Israel has blossomed. The land, is, the land part of Israel has prospered. Yes, that, yes. But the nation of Israel hasn't blossomed yet. God said, God was speaking of the fig tree that was a nation of Israel to blossom. That doesn't take place until Revelation. And we know in Revelation, there's, there's a countdown. When the rapture takes place, we know that there's a countdown where there's seven years left before the end of the age. And within those three and a half years, Israel's eyes is open and they blossom. That generation does not, that, that generation, there's many people that will not die they will not die. They will see the coming of the Lord. And many people that survive the tribulation will be part of the millennium. That drives it home and that, fit, that scripture fits perfectly. Glory to God. Shiva, come over here. We're going to pray for some of your prayer requests here right now. And there's more on this teaching that I'm giving, you know. So I do prayer. I was able and God has revealed these things. So saints, um, there's a lot more to this. But many of you have, have prayed, and these are, are, are prayer requests over uh, a time. So we want to believe God for you. But one of the things I want you to know is that who Jesus is. Do you know Jesus? Do you know him as your Lord and Savior? Do, do you have eternal life? How do you know that? It's through Jesus Christ. Many years ago, me and my wife, we gave our life to the Lord. We gave our life to the Lord. We, really, we recognize him as the Lord and Savior and the Redeemer of all mankind. But it's a free gift. It's not just given to you. You have to want it. You have to ask for it. And if you ask, he will give it to you. It's a, he paid the price. But if you, never, if you don't want it, you know, you, you make a decision to be separated from him. I don't want to be separated. 
I realize that I'm gonna that this body will not always be around. I have a I have a, a resurrected body waiting for me. I can't wait for that. Believe me. But right now I want to be, I want to let the Lord use his body, my mind, soul, everything, interior, exterior, for his glory. But I know when I take my last breath where I'm going. Shiva knows, my dear wife, she knows that she will be from apart from the body to be present with the Lord. But you can have that gift too. Let's pray with us right now. We're going to pray together with you. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I believe you're the Son of God. Me and my wife are praying with you right now. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Save me right now. Save me right now. I believe what you did on the cross. I believe what you did on the cross. I believe you, you paid the price for my sins. You paid the price for my sins. Save me right now, Lord. Save me right, right now. Lord. Write me in the Lamb's Book of Life. Write me in the Lamb's Book of in Life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you've been, if you receive that right now, you pray with all your heart. God has saved you. We're gonna lay hands right now. Let's lay hands on this, Sheba. Ha, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that every prayer request be answered. Father, there are many people that are on a bed of affliction, those that are suffering, Lord, mentally, financially, physically. Lord, we just pray over every legal we press. We pray over every legal we press. Every, every, Lord, those that have been demonically oppressed, Father, in the name of Jesus, we visit them, Lord. Set them free. Father, we pray over sickness. Well, those, Lord, we pray of those that have lost loved ones, Lord. We pray for those, Father, that have unforgiveness, Lord. Lord, redeem them. Show them the way. Show them the way, Heavenly Father. Show them the way that forgiveness is through Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, there's so many of those that are need help. They're calling on you right now. They sent their prayer request in. Father, we, Lord, we just, Father, we ask that you would answer prayers for legal battles. Answer prayers, Father, for physical battles, physical challenges. Answer prayers, Father, Lord, for mental challenges right now. F answer prayers, Lord, for, Lord, Lord, those that are the, the, they're having issues for whatever situation it is, Lord. Father, you are the God that answers prayers. We thank you, Lord, for that in the name of Jesus, Lord. As we lay hands and as we are praying, you know, I want you to connect your faith with me and Shiva's faith right now. Connect your faith with our faith right now and believe God and believe God. We have 35 nations plus that are watching us. We're watching you, watching us on Facebook, on Twitter. You're watching us in different places around the world in, di in this nation. Let's just connect our faith together and believe God. It doesn't matter if I didn't call your problem out. Jesus knows your problem. Right now, we're going to put it into the hands of the Lord. God is a healer. He's a redeemer. He will set you free. He will give you an answer to your situation. We pay, take our burdens and we lay it on to the Lord. I want to thank you so much for being a part of this program. We love you, but most of all, Jesus loves you. And like I've always told you before, the good news is that you don't have to be part of the bad news in Christ Jesus. We're going to see you next time here on Only the Truth. Bye-bye. Love you.